this episode I'm going to talk about team fighting and how do you want to create an opportunity for a team fight and what's your main focus in the team fight as well. So in this game I'm playing a Slark against Team Nigma and I'm going to show you a bit of a different approach how you can start a fight when you're ahead. So in this one, like first of all, like I saw Battle is top, but I knew that he has BOTs, I have edges, I'm quite strong and I know that the enemies don't want to fight me at all and they're trying to dodge me. So what you need to do in a situation like that is, first I knew that they saw me because of these ops, I saw it earlier, they reviewed me. And how can you better fight like that is, like first of all Slark is a hero who can get to, into fighting really quick. So heroes that get into fight, like that can cross them up quick, like Void, Jumpers, Morphling, Embers and all these heroes, you can abuse that. So right now they saw that I'm here and automatically they want to fight bot on this run but this is like a big bait for them. You know, they, they think they're strong enough, but you're going to come in the fight in the next five seconds. It means you just bait them into fighting by showing on the other side of the map and just baiting them into going on your team because you can come fast. And I want to show what happens next. They saw me, they want to fight this round already, but I'm connecting fast. Uh, so right now from here, I saw bat. Now my focus is going to be automatically, I know like what are the problems for me and what are the easiest skills for me because I want to take away the supports, I want to take Wisp because Wisp is the guy who's going to get out AM from like all these disruptor spells, Lina issues, Wisp is going to save AM and I want to kill Lich because I don't want this guy to drop, uh, what's the spell name, Chain Frost on us and I, these guys are just dying in a few hits for me so this is my main target. I want to leave AM for the last because this guy, he has Sanj, Manta, I'm gonna waste so much time into killing AM and I don't wanna waste time. So the fight starts, I'm seeing Wisp. Main focus instantly Wisp. I see Lich, I'm going for Lich. I'm just ignoring AM, Beast, all these tanky heroes, I'm gonna deal with them later. See, like, Lich dies, he didn't use a single spell, he didn't have it as well, but it doesn't matter. And Wisp completely zoned away from AM. So now we go on AM only after they used everything. Uh, it didn't work out this time, but this is still the right focus in the fight. And again, I'm just going for like AM this time because Wisp is kind of hard to get. Then, actually, it's a good way. The thing is, when you go for supports, when you go for like Wisps and all these saving supports, when you do that, you kind of reveal, like you kind of forcing everyone else to show. Because if they don't save Wisp or if they don't save Lich, they're going to lose the fire automatically. So these guys, they have to show up the moment you go on a support. This way, you're like poking the beast to show because it's harder for you to initiate on beast. Imagine you go on beast or AM, Wisp relocates out, you're not doing anything. But if you start on supports, you review everybody else to show, then the fight is like a different story already. Uh, when it comes to that, I want to mention another story, like uh, for example, the supports are hiding. Imagine in the next game, supports are hiding and you only see the carry. It could be a PA, Void, AM, TB and so on and so on. What you want to do then is, you want to use a few spells on TB, but you don't want to commit on this carry. You want to just poke the beast again and wait the supports to show, because by poking this guy, you're gonna force all these saving supports to show a little bit, then you go on supports. But you ignore the main guy, you just wanna kill supports, then focus on cores. See, they're gonna wisp in these guys, these guys showed, and now it doesn't matter that AM is full HP, as you can see, we barely touched him. Wisp was the most important, you know, we couldn't catch him, but by going on him, now Beast and Battery the review, they're dying. Usually it's a bad time to take a team fight when your lanes are in a bad shape and your lanes are coming to you and you want to rush into a fight because this way you don't see where the other heroes went. It means that they could be grouping up, it means they may be smoking, they're going to be prepared for your move. So what you want to do is you need to see a guy first and you need to apply pressure. You need to force somebody to show because you need some sort of information before you fight because you can't go into dark map, into blind like, areas, into your lanes coming to your face. You need to make sure that this is not happening before you go into fighting. In team fights, usually top one priority is the guy who is gonna say like depends now. Like in some games, there's gonna be this big initiator guy. So like it could be let's say if it's Enigma, you need to make sure that you don't group up together. You you want one guy. Like for example, if I'm playing the carry, I'm gonna be the only one poking them like poking a little bit to see where Enigma is, because we don't want to group up and get like three or four men like black hole, because then it's not gonna work out. But in some games you're going to be playing against saving supports like this one, like they have Lich, Wisp, could be Oracle, uh, Dazzle and so on. And you want to ideally find these guys first before like you try to kill the carries. Because for example, you're going to jump on the main, on the like Beast or AM, you're going to jump on a tanky guy, he's going to get saved and then 
You use your BKBs, your roots for nothing, and basically you're gonna lose the fight. But in some games, again, like I said, in some games, you're not gonna see these supports. They're gonna be hiding so well. So what you need to do is you need to poke the carries first. But by that, I don't mean like you just hit them a little bit, use a few spells and see if they're gonna show. If they don't show, you don't need to rush in the fight. Like you need to wait and see until they show up. Because if you just rush in, you're gonna lose the fight. In this game, I'm playing Faceless Void against OG in the semi-final. And I want to talk about a simple concept that even us, we don't do it. It's about forcing a fight on an OBS, and usually the OBS is on a cliff or just in a good spot that's going to be like, you create this choke point. Basically, this OBS means that's a choke point. If you had a good OBS on a cliff or whatever, this is your choke point and this is a fight you want to take. And it doesn't matter even if the fight, even if you're alone and you're the lone, like alone starting a fight, it's still good because you create a really good opportunity for your team to come by, help you and just win the fight. And this is what I want to show you. And we showed you in the previous episode against Team Secret that we fought on their ops and we lost because of it. Now I want to see you how you can open a fight and how you should be forcing fights on choke points. So you see that in this one, we have the subs. And even though my team, these guys here, uh, Jakiro is not nearby, Furin is showing top and DK is showing mid, this doesn't mean that you should be scared to start the fight. Because like I said, your team is going to come by and you need to open the fight, especially if you have a spell like Chronosphere or Raid King Oath or like maybe Abyssal on AM, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to show you is, this is the choke point and I want to show you uh, their vision. As you can see, like they don't see that I'm there, but I'm waiting on this cliff because I have ops. Now they're going to walk in slowly because they see Jikiro, they see Firion, and they're like, okay, they're not here, right? They see two heroes, but that's not true because I'm waiting to create this chaos and to make this fight happen. Now they walk to me, I saw an opening, and I'm going for two heroes. That's what I want. Now my team is going to connect, even if, they're gonna, even if they don't come straight away, this is a fight you want to create. Because right now, when you do that, Zeus is going to be exposed, everyone is going to be exposed, and all the easy targets for you are just going to come by, and it's going to be much easier than just waiting and waiting. As you can see, now Jig is going to be a hard kill, so I just go for Venge. My DK now has such an easy job, because I started the fight and he just goes for Zeus, then we kill Zeus, and now that there is no more damage, basically. Even if he gets RP on us, they can't really finish the job, because they run out of damage. As you can see, that's a one team fight. And yeah, Zeus bought back, he dies back, we get more kills. We got in Toro, what like, they bought three heroes, two diebacks, just because I wanted to abuse this choke point. So as you can see, from one simple choke point, we got six kills and three buybacks. Alright, so in this replay, I am playing Stark against Team Nigma, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by baiting spells and just baiting the enemies into like a worse position than they were already in. So again, I knew that my Rubik is showing bot. He told us I saw him. So I knew that the moment they see Rubik, they wanna go on us. But what I wanna do is I want them to go on me, because first I have Echo Saber, Halbert, I'm quite tanky, and I wanna bait spells and I wanna make my team get an easy fight by me creating this opportunity for them. So how I'm going to do that is I saw this guy coming for me and I knew like all five heroes are going to come to me. The Rubik can't really connect, so it means we start 4v5 and now my team is not really ready to help me at all. But if I buy enough time for them by baiting spells, then I can win this fight. As you can see, they start on me and I just wanted to bait stun, spells. I wanted Batrider to use Firefly, even Lasso, Bane Grip, anything I can bait in. As you can see, they just keep going on me, four heroes, silence, everything used. Now, after they used so many spells, my DP has a free game, my Centaur has a free game, Disruptor is not exposed because of it, and he gets a nice position, he can drop a nice static storm. Now imagine if I don't do that, and they focus Disruptor, for example, the fight is way harder. If I let them go on my supports, then the fight is so hard already. So what you need to do is you need to make sure your supports and your mid guy gets a decent game. And that's in a game where you're like, you're tanky enough to do it. Because not always you're gonna be this tanky hero, right? In some games you're gonna be playing AM, you need to wait for this chance. But in the, in the games where you have these items that you feel strong, you have to be doing this constantly. And as we can see, now it's such a simple game for my guys. They, the disruptor is full HP. Everything is used on me, literally everything. And it's just such an easy fight because of it. Like, DP is full HP, center of full HP. My Rubik is not even in the fight because I knew that if they use spells, 
There is no way we lose, even 4v5. Let's give a little bit more. And we get three kills. Not only that, Rosh is up. And that's already almost game over. See, in this moment, like, I realized what's the maximum of my hero. So there were times in previous games where I used to die like that, but if you don't push your limit, you never understand how to, like, how to play on the limit any game. So don't be discouraged if in your games, let's say you die a few times, this is the only way you can learn how to play on the edge. And playing on the edge is always the best because you're gonna create so many chances for your team. All right, in, in this game, I'm playing Weaver against Flight to Moon. And again, I'm gonna show you first what my target is gonna be in the fight and second, how to bait spells and how to create, again, an opportunity for your team to come back. So first in this game, again, I know PO is extremely hard to die. Puck, Elusive again, Pango can OT. So my main focus in every fight, straight away, undying, Grim. If I get these guys out of the fight, then PO can't really sustain a fight anymore. So this is my main focus from now. As you can see, I see undying, I go for undying straight. Dies, he buys back, it doesn't matter. Now I'm looking for Grimstroke. I don't want to fight anybody else, I know Grimstroke is my guy. Skip a little bit. See, I, I see everyone, but my focus, Grimstroke and nobody else. As you can see, he's charging in. And I finish Grimstroke, both of supports buying back. Next guy on the list is Pango, baiting the Uti. And now, I see my guys are dying. Bane bought back, many buybacks are gonna happen. So, my axe bought back as well, and I know right now that the only way we're gonna fight is by making, like, by baiting spells and my axe getting a decent call or co-op getting a good ulti. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rush in them. But what I want is, I don't want to just sit in the middle of the fight. What I mean by that is I wanna rush in, but I want to be in the trees so I don't get caught off easily and I bait them into some awkward spot, uh, as we can see. Again, Grimstroke, every fight, just the easiest supports needs to die. I don't care about PL, Puck, they're gonna die last if it's needed. Grimstroke and dying. Now we see these guys are coming to me, and it's coming. Five people are trying to hit me, and we get a five man call. The game is over. That's the thing, I, you don't worry about anything, you don't hesitate. You just do it. If you die, then you die. Next time it's gonna be better. But the thing is, if you don't force these fights and if you don't push your limit, how can you know where's the limit? There is no way to know that unless you try it and you die. Because I've died in, in similar situations, but because you died once or twice, you know the next time it's going to work. But if you never try it, it's never going to work. So in some of the games, like especially this one, I have an axe and a queen of pain. These heroes are follow-up heroes, which means that I need to be the guy going first. And oftentimes you're going to end up the only guy who can go first and just tank up everything. So you don't have to hesitate for it, you just need to do it. Because if I let my Queen of Pain jump first, you're gonna die, then the fight is gonna look bad. If my axe doesn't wait for people to group up, it's gonna look bad for him and it's gonna be really hard to fight like the right jump, especially against elusive heroes like Pio and Puck. So it's your job to make them and force them to do that. So in some games, you're gonna be the only guy who can force this fight and you're gonna be the only guy who can tank spells and bait spells. Because in this game, especially you see, we have an axe who wants to be a follow-up who wants to see people group up before he goes. Same thing goes for co-op, both supports don't want to show. So it's up to you to stay tank up and make this game easy for them. Make the game easy for your axe, make the game easy for your Queen of Pain, or it's gonna look really bad. So the most important thing about team fighting is realizing what are the big issues in your fight. So for instance, if they have elusive heroes that are hard to die, you need to choose the supports, and by killing the supports, you're gonna make their cores show in bad positions. This way, it's gonna open up good fights for your jumpers, for your initiators, and by creating this chaos, you're gonna win every fight, basically. Or at least, you're gonna put your team in a good spot, because nobody else can do it in most of the games. The, another important thing is uh, forcing people to choke points by using ops. This is really underrated, but one of the most efficient ways of finding a fight. So for example, it's late game, and you have this one ops on this cliff, you have to use it. Because vision late game is almost everything. If you see a good fight, it means you're gonna open up a good fight. And this cliff is gonna win you the game. Usually the biggest mistake that people do is that like, for example, uh, they, they see a PL or they see an anti-mage, they see the carry and they're like, okay, we're gonna jump this guy, we're gonna kill him, but no, that's not how it works. Usually when you see this tanky carry sitting in front, 
there is a high chance that he's baiting you to go on him. But you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to bait people a little bit, you want to hit them a little bit, wait and see the supports to show. That's when you go in. If you don't see supports and you don't see anyone, you can't just go on AM. Unless, of course, you have some 25 big chrono and you think you can zone the supports, then that's a different story. But most of the times you don't want to just go in.